Hello viewers, I am Nila Fuzzergaon. Welcome you to the chapter of regression analysis. In this session, we will study the meaning of regression and properties of regression coefficients. We will also determine the regression analysis to estimate or predict the values of a dependent variable from known values of an independent variable and we will also determine standard error of estimate. We will first acquaint ourselves with the terms which are going to be used in the discussion what we shall discuss about these topics, but we must first understand the following concepts before proceeding further. From our discussion in the previous chapter, we are able to find a way of determining whether or not a relationship existed between two variables. Regression analysis attempts to establish the nature of relationship between variables, that is, to study the functional relationship between the variables and thereby provide a mechanism for prediction or forecasting. A mathematical equation that allows us to predict value of one variable from known values of one or more than other variable is called a regression equation. The variable whose value is to be predicted is called the dependent variable or explained variable. The variables which are used to predict the values of dependent variable are called independent variable or explanatory variables. The regression analysis confined to the study of only two variables, a dependent variable and an independent variable is called a simple regression analysis. When the relationship between the dependent variable and the independent variable is linear, the technique for prediction is called simple linear regression. The literal or the dictionary meaning of the word regression is stepping back or moving backward or returning to average value. It was Sir Francis Galton who first used the term regression as a statistical concept in 1877. He studied the relationship between the heights of father and their sons. This term was introduced by him in the paper Regression Towards Mediocrity in Hereditary Stature. He arrived at some interesting conclusions which are described below. That is, tall fathers have tall sons and short fathers have short sons. Second, the average height of the sons of short fathers is more than the average height of their fathers. Third point, the average height of the sons of tall fathers is less than the average height of the fathers. In other words, the statistical tool with the help of which we are in a position to estimate of predict the unknown value of one variable from known values of another variable is called regression. Galton's study revealed that uh, the offsprings of abnormally tall or short parents tend to revert or step back to the average height of the population, a phenomenon which Galton described as regression to mediocrity. Regression thus implies going back or returning towards the average. Galton used the term regression as a statistical technique to predict on variable, the height of children, from another variable, the height of parents. But today the word regression as used in statistics has much wider perspective without any reference to biometry. In this section, we are estimating the value of a dependent variable from known values of independent variable. If we take the case of two variables, say x and y, we shall have two regression lines as a regression of x on y and regression of y on x. The regression line of y on x gives the most probable values of y for given values of x and regression line of x on y gives the most probable values of x for given values of y. Thus, we have two regression lines. However, when there is either the perfect positive or perfect negative correlation between the two variables, the two regression lines will coincide. 
that is we will have only one line the farther the two regression lines from each other the lesser is the degree of correlation and the nearer the two lines regression to each other the higher is the degree of correlation if the variates are independent r is zero and the lines of regression are at right angles that is parallel to ox and oy to make such a prediction suppose that we have a bivariate data that consists of n pairs of observations the pairs are x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 so on like x and yn on two quantitative variables x and y are approximately linearly related so that the data points follow closely a straight line on a scatter diagram on this basis we may fit by eye a straight line that approximates a given data this line can be then used to predict a value of y for a given value of x unfortunately determining a line by eye is not very objective because so many lines exist for a given data unless a correlation is equal to plus or minus 1 we therefore need to establish a criteria for selecting a line of best fit a frequently used criteria is the least square criteria according to the least square criteria the line of best fit is the one that minimizes the sum of the squares of the vertical distances from the observed points to the line thus if a line of best fit approximating the given data has the equation y equals to a plus bx then the method of least square requires that we must determine constants a and b so as to minimize the distance s so s will be minimized as s equals to y1 minus a minus bx1 the whole thing raised to the power of 2 plus y2 minus a minus bx2 the whole thing raised to the power of 2 again so on till yn minus a minus bxn the whole thing to the power of 2 so that is equal to d1 square plus d2 square so on plus dn square where di is yi minus a minus bxi represents the vertical deviation of the ith observed point from the line of the best fit the determination of a and b so as to minimize this can be accomplished by means of differential calculus we omit the proof and state the final two equations which are to be used to determine the values of a and b these equations known as the normal equations for estimating a and b are given by sigma y equals to na plus b sigma x so that make equation 1 sigma xy is equal to a times sigma x plus b times sigma x square so let's make this equation number 2 now solving these two equation first and the second one simultaneously for a and b we will obtain b which is equal to sigma xy minus sigma x times sigma x divided by n the whole thing is divided by sigma x square minus sigma x the whole square divided by n so that gives us n times sigma xy minus sigma x times sigma x the whole thing is again divided by n times sigma x square minus sigma x so the whole square and a is equal to y bar minus b times x bar hence the line of best fit approximating the n pairs of observations x1 y1 x2 y2 and so on like x n y n is y equals to a plus b x let's make this equation number 3 where b is equal to sigma xy minus sigma x times sigma y divided by n the whole thing is divided by sigma x square minus sigma x the whole square by n so that is giving us n times sigma xy minus sigma x times sigma y divided by n times sigma x square minus sigma x whole square equation number 4 now let's see next one a is equal to y bar minus b times x bar so this is equation number 5 so the line of best fit given by equation 3 is called the least square line of regression of y on x the constant b is called the regression coefficient of y on x and it is denoted by byx it measures a change in y corresponding to a unit change in x thus byx represents the slope of the line of regression of y on x and is given by byx equals to sigma xy minus 
sigma x times sigma y by n the whole thing divided by sigma x square minus sigma x the whole square divided by n. So, this is equal to n times sigma x y minus sigma x times sigma y divided by n times sigma x square minus sigma x the whole square. This is equation number 6. Now, the formula that is given in equation number 5 estimating the value of a clearly shows that the line of regression of y on x passes through the point x bar and y bar and hence the equation of the line of regression of y on x can also be written as y minus y bar equals to b y x times x minus x bar. Let us make this equation number 7. This equation is then used to estimate a value of y for a given value of x. On the other hand, if we wish to estimate a value of x for a given of value of y, we have to obtain the regression line of x on y. So, that is x equals to c plus dy. Now, let us make this equation number 8, where the constant c and d are determined according to least square criteria. The two normal equations for estimating c and d are given again as sigma x equals to n times c plus t times sigma y. So, this implies that sigma x y equals to c times sigma x plus d times sigma y square. Now, solving these normal equations simultaneously for c and d, we obtain d equals to sigma x y minus sigma x times sigma y divided by n the whole thing divided by sigma y square minus sigma y the whole square divided by n. So, this is equal to n times sigma x y minus sigma x times sigma y divided by n times sigma y square minus sigma y the whole square. So, this is equation number 8. So, c will be equal to x bar minus d times y bar. Let us make this equation 9. The constant d is called the regression coefficient of x on y and it is denoted by b x y. It measures the change in x corresponding to a unit change in y. Clearly, 1 upon b x y represent the slope of the regression line of x on y. Further, the formula given equation number 9 estimating the value of c clearly shows that the line of regression of x on y passes again through the point x bar and y bar and hence the equation of the line of regression of x on y can also be written as y minus y bar equals to 1 upon b x y into x minus x bar or this can be written as x minus x bar equals to b x y times y minus y bar. Let us make this equation number 10, where b x y is equal to sigma x y minus sigma x times sigma y divided by n, the whole thing divided by sigma y square minus sigma y the whole square by n. So, that is giving us n times sigma x y minus sigma x times sigma y divided by again n times sigma y square minus sigma y the whole square. This is equation number 11. For this, we have an example. Let us look at the example calculate the regression coefficient for the following information. The information given is capital N is given as 10, sigma x is given 50, sigma y is given 30, sigma x square is given 3000, sigma y square is given 1800, sigma x y is given as 1000. Let us make the regression lines now. For the solution we have regression coefficient of x and y that is the first thing we have to calculate. So, we have to calculate b x y. So, we have the formula for b x y with us. Now, substituting these values in the formula will have 1000 minus 50 times 30 divided by 10. The whole thing is divided by 1800 minus 30 to the power 2 divided by 10. So, that is giving us 850 divided by 1710. So, we have the final value that is 0 0.497. Now, let us calculate the regression coefficient of y on x. So, that is b y x. So, in the formula for b y x, let us substitute the values again and by substituting the values, we will have b y x equals to 1000 minus 50 times 30 divided by 10. The whole thing is divided by 3000 minus 50, the whole square divided by 10. So, that is giving us 850 divided by 2750. So, we have the final value that is 0 0.309. In this section, we shall derive some more formulas for regression coefficients. The first formula, formulas of regression coefficient in terms of covariance and variances. 
by definition the regression coefficient of y on x is given by b by x equals to sigma x y minus sigma x by times sigma y by n divided by sigma x square minus sigma x the whole square by n. This is equation 1. Similarly, regression coefficient of y on x is given as b x y equals to sigma x y minus sigma x times sigma y by n divided by sigma x y square minus sigma y the whole square by n. This is equation number 2. The reader may also recall that the covariance between x and y is given by covariance of x on y is given as sigma x y by n minus sigma x by n times sigma y by n. So, this is equation number 3. Further, the variances of x and y values are respectively given by the formula like sigma x square equals to variance of x. So, sigma x square represents the variance of x which is equal to sigma x square by n minus sigma x n the whole square. Let us make this equation 4. So, sigma y square equals to the variance of y and this is calculated as sigma y square by n minus sigma y n the whole square. So, make this equation 5. Now, from the equation 1, 3 and 4, we find that b by x will be covariance of x y divided by sigma x square. Let us make this equation 6. Similarly, from 2, 3 and 5, we will find that b x y will be equal to covariance of x y divided by sigma y square make this equation 7. Thus, we have the following formulas. Next one, formula of for regression coefficient in terms of deviation of x and y values from their respective means. By definition, the covariance between x and y is given by covariance of x y is equal to sigma x minus x bar times y minus y bar. The whole thing is divided by n. Further, the variances of x and y values are respectively given by sigma x square equals to sigma x minus x bar the whole square by n and sigma y square is given as sigma y minus y bar the whole square by n. Thus, using these formulas, formula 1, we obtain b y x will be equal to covariance of x y by sigma x square. So, that is equal to sigma x minus x bar times y minus y bar divided by sigma x minus x bar the whole square and b x y will be equal to covariance of x y divided by sigma y square that is equal to sigma x minus x bar times y minus y bar divided by sigma y minus y bar the whole square. If we let x and y denote the deviation of x and y values from their uh, respective means that is small x is equal to x minus x bar and small y equals to y minus y bar. Then the above formulas for regression coefficients can be put in the following form. Formulas for regression coefficient in terms of r, sigma x, sigma y. We know that the coefficient of correlation r is given by r, small r and it is equal to covariance of x y divided by sigma x times sigma y. So, that implies b y x is going to be covariance of x y divided by sigma x square that is equal to sigma y by sigma x times covariance of x y divided by sigma x times sigma y. So, that is equal to sigma y by sigma x times r. So, that means b by x can be written as r times sigma y by sigma x. Similarly, b x y can be calculated as covariance of x y divided by sigma y square that is equal to sigma x by sigma y times covariance of x y divided by sigma x times sigma y that is equal to sigma x by sigma y times r. So, that means p x y can be written as r times sigma x by sigma y. The two regression equation can be put in the following ways again y on x can be written as y minus y bar that is equal to r times sigma y by sigma x times x minus x bar equation 1 and x on y can be written as x minus x bar equals to small r times sigma x y sigma y times y minus y bar. So, let us make this equation number 2. If there is a perfect correlation between the two variables that is r is equal to plus minus 1, the regression equation of y on x becomes y minus y bar equals to plus minus sigma y by sigma x times x minus x bar or y minus y bar 
by sigma y will be equal to plus minus x minus x bar by sigma x. Let us make this equation 3. Similarly, the regression equation of x on y becomes x minus x bar equals to plus minus sigma x by sigma y times y minus y bar or we can write it as y minus y bar by sigma y equals to plus minus x minus x bar by sigma x. So, make this equation 4 which is same as 3. Hence, in the case of the perfect correlation, the two regression lines coincide. That can be seen in the figure as well. Now, let us come to the next one that is if r is equal to 0, that is if x and y are uncorrelated the two regression equations reduces to y equals to y bar and x will be equal to x bar and hence they are perpendicular to each other. We will see an example here. Compute the two lines of regression on the basis of the following information. So, in this we have given two variables x and y. For two variables x and y the mean and standard deviation is given. So, mean for x is 40 and for y is 45 and standard deviation for x is 10 and for y is 9. The Carl Pearson coefficient correlation between x and y is equal to is also given that is 0 0.50. Also estimate the value of y for x which is equal to 48 using the appropriate regression equation. Let us look at the solution. We are given with x bar which is equal to 40, we are given with y bar which is equal to 60, sigma x is equal to 10 and sigma y is equal to 9 and r is given as 0 0.5. So, by the formula b x y equals to r times sigma x y sigma y, we are applying this formula and that is we are putting the values, we have 0 0.5 times 10 by 9 which is giving us 0 0.556. And similarly, we are calculating b y x using the formula r times sigma y by sigma x which is equal to 0 0.5 times n by 10 that is giving us 0 0.45. Now, let us calculate the regression line of y on x. For this, we have the formula y minus y bar equals to b y x times x minus x bar. Let us substitute the values y minus 45 equals to 0 0.45 times x minus 40. So, that is giving us the equation y equals to 0 0.45 x plus 27. Let us calculate the other line, the regression line of x on y now. The equation we have is x minus x bar equals to b x y times y minus y bar. So, let us substitute the values x minus 40 equals to 0 0.556 times y minus 45. That is giving us the equation x equals to 0 0.556 y plus 14.98. Now, the appropriate regression line for estimating the value of y for a given value of x is y equals to 0 0.45 x plus 27. So, the regression line of y on x. Hence, if we substitute x is equal to 48 in the equation, the estimated value of y will be calculated as 0 0.45 times 48 plus 27, which will give us the y value as 48.6. In this section, we shall derive some important properties of regression coefficient. The first one, the coefficient of correlation and the two regression coefficients have the same psi. We have the proof for this. We know that the two regression coefficients are given by this formula b y x equals to covariance of x y by sigma x square and b x y is given as covariance of x y divided by sigma y square. Since sigma x square and sigma y square are always positive, whereas covariance of x of y may be positive or negative, therefore we conclude from the above formulas that the regression coefficients b y x and b x y have the same sign as that of covariance x and y. Further, we know that the coefficient of correlation r has the same sign as that of covariance of x and y. Thus, the coefficient of correlation and the two regression coefficients have the same sign. Second property, the coefficient of correlation is a geometric mean between the regression coefficients. The proof is we have b y x times b x y. So, let us multiply the two coefficients and we get r times sigma y by sigma x times r times sigma x by sigma y. So, this is equal to r square because sigma y and sigma x are going to cancel out. So, that is giving us r square is equal to b y x times b x y which shows that the coefficient of correlation is a geometric mean between the regression coefficients. Let us see the third property. 
if one of the regression coefficients is greater than unity, the other must be less than unity. Let's see the proof for this. We know that the correlation coefficient r ranges from minus 1 to plus 1. And therefore, r square is lesser than or equal to 1. Hence, byx times bxy is equal to r square which is going to be lesser than or equal to 1. And from the last inequality, the result follows immediately. We now state without any proof yet another property of regression coefficient. Let's see the next property. The regression coefficients are independent of change of origin but not of scale. In fact, we defined, let's define u that is capital U equals to x minus a divided by h and let's define u as y minus b by k where a, b, h is greater than 0 and k is lesser than 0. These are constants. Then b, x, y is equal to h by k, b, u, v and b by x will be k by h times b, v, u. In particular, if we take h equals to k equals to 1, that is we transform the variables x and y to u and v by the relation u is equal to x minus a and v equals to y minus b. Then b x y will be equal to b u v and b y x will be equal to b v u. As discussed earlier, the primary use of the regression equation is to estimate values of dependent variable from known values of independent variable. However, the natural question is how reliable is the estimate? Obviously, an important factor in determining reliability is the closeness of the relationship between the variables. For example, let's look at the figure which is given below showing two scatter diagrams, where we assume that both scatter diagrams have the same scale of the variables and the same regression line. In figure A, the point in the scatter diagrams are closely scattered around the regression line, so it's logical to assume that an estimate based on the relationship will be more reliable than an estimate based on the regression line which is shown in figure number B where the spread is much greater. Therefore, if we had a measure of the extent of the spread or scatter of the point above the regression line, we would be in a better position to judge reliability of estimates using the line. In fact, we do have a measure indicating the extent of the spread or scatter of the points about the regression line. This measure is called the standard error of estimate. Standard error of estimate, let's define this, the standard error of estimate is a standard deviation that measures the scatter or spread of the actual values around the regression line. The formula for the standard error of estimate of y on x is Syx which is given as under root sigma of y minus yc the whole square divided by 2. So that is giving us under root of unexplained variation divided by n. Let us make this equation 1. In this formula y represents the dependent variable, x represents the independent variable and yc represents a computed or estimated y value and n is a number of paired observations. The above formula for computing the standard error of estimate is not a practical one, but it is good definitional formula to explain the nature of Syx. In this formula, it is clear that the standard error of estimate is a square root of the mean of the squared deviations of computed y values, that is yc, from the actual y values. A convenient formula for computing the standard error of estimate after having calculated a and b in the regression equations, y c equals to a plus b x is s y x equals to under root sigma y square minus a times sigma y minus b times sigma x y. The whole thing is divided by n. Yet another formula for computing the standard error of estimate is sigma y x equals to sigma y times under root 1 minus r the whole square where r is the coefficient of correlation. The standard error of estimate is used to qualify the estimate made with the regression equation by indicating the extent of the possible variations or error that may be present. From an estimating standpoint, the smaller this measure is, the more reliable the prediction is likely to be. 
the procedure for computing regression coefficient for a bivariate grouped frequency distribution is almost similar to the procedure for calculating correlation coefficient as discussed in previous chapter. Thus, the first step in such cases is to present the given data in bivariate frequency table or a correlation table. However, it may be remarked here that the regression coefficients are independent of change of origin but not of scale. In fact, if we define it u equals to x minus a by h and v equals to y minus b by k, then bxy equals to h by k times b u v that is equal to capital N times sigma f u v minus sigma f u times sigma f v. The whole thing is divided by n times sigma f e square minus sigma f e the whole square times h by k and b y x will be equal to k by h times b v u which is equal to capital N times sigma f u v minus sigma f u times sigma f v. The whole thing is divided by capital N times sigma f u square minus sigma f u the whole square times k by h. So, let us quickly summarize what we have learned in today's session. We have done uh, the introduction of measures of regression. In this session, we have studied the meaning of regression and properties of regression coefficients. We have also learned how to determine the regression analysis to estimate or predict the values of a dependent variable from known values of independent variable and learned how to determine the standard error of estimate. So, that brings us to the end of today's episode. We are ending here the chapter of regression analysis. And we'll see you again discussing about our next topics on more wide variety. Thank you for watching it. Have a nice time. Bye.